What's going on guys? Chris Cook in Nashville here. Today we have, I think, my favorite carnivore recipe that I've ever created, at least to date. Maybe we'll see if we can beat this one in the future. But today, and I know a bunch of you are excited, I'm going to show you how to make carnivore potato salad. It's absolutely insane. I've been told that people think I'm like some kind of weird robot or something that's doing these things because they don't understand where these recipes are coming from. And to be honest, I'm not sure if I do either. I just know it tastes fantastic and it tastes almost exactly like my mom's potato salad I grew up eating. Guys, this is a real fun one. I'm going to show you how to do it and I think you guys are really going to enjoy it. So let's get to cooking and let's make some potato salad. Okay guys, I have my large non-stick skillet here. I have this turned on to a medium heat. Depending on your stove, you can go to medium high as long as you make sure to keep an eye on it or maybe you should go to medium low if it gets really hot. This is about a third of a stick of butter. So this is somewhere around three tablespoons. It doesn't have to be exact. We're just gonna put that into the skillet, get that melting. And I wanna make sure that the bottom of the skillet is really well coated so that everything is as non-stick as it can be because we are going to be using our favorite egg whites from the mashed potato recipe. So there's our egg whites. Again, you can do this with real egg whites, just crack whole eggs. It takes about 30, but this is just convenient. Put those in there. Now I'm gonna put a large pinch of salt and you don't really have to measure this. You just need enough to help break down the proteins. We're gonna drop that in there, start stirring this around and we're gonna scramble this. Now this is the exact same technique as my mashed potatoes video. You can see they're scrambled just like I did in the mashed potatoes video. I'll link that below if you have not seen that and you wanna see this in more detail, go there and check it out. So I'm just scrambling these eggs. I'm breaking them all up. That's why I'm using my spatula to do this. If you have a potato masher, Indigo Neely had a great idea in a video recipe uh, review that she did of my mashed potato recipe and was talking about using a potato masher. That's a great way. I'm using this because I don't have one. Now you can see there's no liquid in the bottom of this pan really, but the pan is still pretty wet and the eggs are still pretty wet. I'm gonna hold them up close here. You can see they're still pretty wet. Now these are browning just slightly. I want to make sure they don't brown too much, but a little bit is okay actually in this particular recipe. And I'm gonna keep cooking these and really try to dry these eggs out. You can see when I lift them up like this, how they kind of want to stick together and it's still pretty wet on the spatula. We want to cook all of that out. So if I hold this up, you can see it's really starting to dry out. And I want to get to a point where when I pick it up, it all kind of crumbles apart. So I'm just gonna keep stirring this around and cook that last bit of liquid out and continue doing that until it's all crumbly. That's gonna be the key to making this work and not taste like eggs. Now we're gonna go over to the blender, just like with the mashed potatoes, I have two ounces of cream cheese and I have two ounces of the fresh mozzarella. Those are both gonna go into the bottom of the blender. And then along with that, I have my toasted beef gelatin. This is about a teaspoon, teaspoon and a half. It doesn't have to be real exact, but about a teaspoon to a teaspoon and a half of the toasted gelatin, and then about a tablespoon of the regular beef gelatin as well. We're gonna put in that one teaspoon of the Parmesan, which was in the mashed potato recipe as well. We're not gonna put in any of the sour cream. That's one of the things that makes this different and makes this work so well. Okay, so I'm gonna get those things in there, and then I'm gonna go ahead and put my egg mixture on top of those dairy ingredients. And these are warm, they have been sitting in this pan and I've really let them sit there and try to dry them out as much as I can. And then I'm gonna add some heavy cream. Now, as you're adding heavy cream, I'm gonna start with two to three tablespoons. You can use as much as you need because you just wanna turn this on, turn it on low and we're gonna slowly increase speed, but we wanna get it blending, okay? So that cream is gonna help this blend, you can see, that my blades are starting to pull the eggs in a little bit, but they are gonna like to stick. That beef gelatin does make them thick. So we might have to use a little more cream, but we'll just continue adding cream a little at a time. And we're gonna turn the speed of my blender up a little bit here. Uh, you can also use a pusher to sort of assist with this, but we want the blades to start pulling that mixture in. And if there's an air bubble like that, we just pop it. Okay, so we're gonna start getting this to go down into the blades. I'm gonna use the pusher and just kind of encourage it down into the blades. This is still on a fairly low speed. So if you have a blender that's not like a high speed blender like this, you can totally do this. Just use your pusher. Now see the pusher, how the grain size is bigger. We want this to be smaller. We wanna get this smoother 
so that we have the right texture. So I'm just gonna keep working with it. I'm gonna keep adding cream just a little bit at a time until I can get this to be a nice pasty texture. And then when I start getting a little bit more of a pasty texture, then I'm gonna turn the speed up a little bit. You can also go up to high if you have a, a blender that only has a couple of speeds. Now it's starting to suck the mixture into the blades and I'm gonna add just a little more cream here to try to help that out. So I've probably added for this whole recipe at this point about six to seven tablespoons of cream, but look at the texture I have now. See how this is a fine grind paste kind of texture. That's what I'm looking for. Okay, now I'm gonna do one more thing. I wanna make this blend just a little better. So I'm actually gonna add some water and that's gonna actually aid in the flavor of this tasting more like a potato salad as well. Okay, so I'm gonna put a little water in there and you can see, see how with the blender running, how it starts to pull that down into the blades, that pasty texture where it can actually move on its own into the blades is what we're looking for. So I'm gonna go ahead and set my oven now to 275 degrees. That's going to preheat as we get this out of the blender. So here's my bowl of mashed potato type mixture and I have egg white powder. You're gonna notice I did not put the egg white powder in the blender this time, but rather I'm gonna fold it in one spoon at a time because we're actually gonna use extra. So I'm gonna take about four tablespoons of this and I'm gonna do it one big spoon at a time. I'm not really measuring it, but it's about four tablespoons. You're gonna sprinkle it over the top and then we're gonna fold this egg white powder in. So I'm folding up over the top and then I'm taking the spatula and pushing that mixture down mixing that egg white powder in really, really thoroughly by smashing it down together. Because this isn't a liquid and it's a paste, this is fairly easy to do. You're gonna see it's gonna get kind of smooth each time when all of that egg white powder gets well combined. Then we go ahead and do a second spoon, sprinkle it over the top, and we're gonna start mixing it in the exact same way. Get that really well incorporated. Then we go ahead and do a third spoon, and again, this is the same process as before. We sprinkle it over the top and then we're gonna fold it in and then we're gonna do the same thing with a fourth spoon. Now, the reason we're sprinkling it over the top is just to try to avoid lumps of dry powder. So when you get those in there, really make sure to squish that down in there. And now you can see the texture of this is very much like that mashed potato mixture, but we don't have all of the same ingredients. It's a little drier. That's the texture that we want. Now we're gonna take a parchment paper lined baking sheet. We're gonna put this in a pile in the middle and we're gonna spread it out to about a half an inch thick. Okay, so we're just gonna scoop all of this out of the bowl, put this onto our baking sheet, and then we're gonna start spreading this out as evenly as we can. Now, when you spread this out, what I kind of do is I push down with the spatula because I wanna make sure there's no big air bubbles inside of this anywhere. So just push it all down, make sure it's all compacted and it's all touching each itself because once it's touching, that egg powder sitting in it is going to help it uh, come together into a cohesive mixture when it is baked. Okay, so I'm just spreading it out and then once I get it spread out to about a half inch thick all the way around, I'm gonna tidy up the edges. This is just to make sure there's not like dry, browned edges where maybe it's thinner than the rest of the mixture. So I'm just gonna smooth out the top and I'm gonna try to smooth out those edges. There's our mixture. This is gonna go into the oven. We're gonna bake it, make sure that it's nice and done, ready to be turned into the cube potato mixture. So that goes in the oven at 275 degrees for 30 minutes. Set your timer while that's happening. I have a batch of butter mayo I whipped up really quickly. That video is down below in the description. If you have not seen it, go watch that because you're gonna need that butter mayo recipe if you wanna season this the way I do. You don't have to, but that's what I'm gonna do. It's basically gonna be 50% butter mayo and 50% sour cream. Use a sour cream of your choice. Now here's how I like to season mine. You don't have to do this, but I use parsley. So I'm gonna do about a teaspoon of freeze-dried parsley. Then the next thing I'm gonna add in is chives. I'm gonna do about a teaspoon of freeze-dried chives. The seasonings and herbs are all optional. You don't have to do any of this if you don't want to. Next is gonna be garlic powder. I'm gonna be doing about a teaspoon of garlic powder, maybe more like a half teaspoon if you uh, don't want it too strong because garlic powder can be a little strong of a flavor. And then onion powder, I'm gonna do about a teaspoon of that as well. 
And I'm just sprinkling these directly on top of the mayonnaise. It's the easiest way to mix it in. Then paprika. This is a secret ingredient. Now, if this bothers you, obviously don't use it. But if you can tolerate paprika, this is a fantastic, fantastic spice to use because it just makes other spices so much better. And then I like a little bit of a tanginess in the potato salad, so I'm adding in about two teaspoons of apple cider vinegar. You don't have to, but I like to. And now I'm going to put the sour cream on top of those spices. Um, I'm putting the sour cream on top of those spices because those are very powdery spices and they're just a little tough to get to incorporate from the very top. They tend to clump together, so I put them directly on the mayo, and then I'm going to put the sour cream on top of the spices, and I'm just doing, again, about 50% mayo, 50% sour cream. Now, I'm going to add some black pepper. You don't have to. You can use white pepper if you want. You don't have to use any pepper. I like black pepper, but if you're sensitive to the oxalates, use white pepper. And then here's another large pinch of salt because that sour cream is not seasoned. Now, you can use a couple of different kinds of things here. You can use Dijon mustard, you can use yellow mustard. If you really like a mustardy potato salad, yellow mustard is probably better, but I like a little more subtle mustard flavor, so I'm gonna use Dijon, and I'm gonna use about two teaspoons of Dijon mustard. Put that right on top, and then we're gonna use the stick blender and just blend that all down in there real well until we get a nice, cohesive sauce to use with our potato salad. And this is gonna be super easy. Once it's all combined, you can see it's kind of liquidy right now because it's still warm. This is gonna go in the fridge. And then when the potato salad is ready to put together, we pour this over the top and we'll fold it in and it'll make a fantastic dish. So 30 minutes later, here we are. We're gonna come out of the oven now. And you can see this doesn't really look that much different, but when you press on it, it should be firm and springy. It's got kind of a dry surface and it is holding up against the pressure of my finger. It is not soft. It feels very firm. Now it is very hot, so we're going to let it cool to uh, not necessarily room temperature, but at least uh, cool enough you can put your hand on it. It's not going to be a problem. And we need to flip it onto a cutting board. So make life easy. Put the cutting board on top, flip the whole thing over, take off the baking sheet, and then it's much easier to peel your parchment paper back without it sticking. Now, when you do this, the bottom of it is gonna have some condensation because that steam doesn't have anywhere to go. I like to take a paper towel and just pat that off. You don't have to, but I feel like there might be a little bit of an eggy flavor sometimes in that liquid that's on the bottom, so I just pat it dry. It should also feel kind of sticky to you. That's perfect. Then I'm just gonna flip it back over, and this is our dry side. I'm gonna flip it so the dry side is up because it's gonna make cutting it easier. We're gonna cut it crossways, and then we're gonna cut it long ways to make potato cubes. So you go down, use the tip of the knife, hold the thing down, and just pull that tip of the knife backwards. I'm cutting these about a quarter to a half an inch thick because we're gonna turn this into cubes. And as I'm cutting this, you'll see the knife tip is actually pointed down. Something that you wanna use uh, the tip of the knife for here is to slide through this mixture. Okay, you can see I kinda get it started and then I can just pull the tip of the knife straight back and it slices right through without tearing it. It helps a lot. If you don't cut it this way, you might struggle a little bit. Don't put your knife flat because it creates too much friction. Point the tip straight down and just slide it back and you can see it slides right through this mixture and slices it without grabbing it, dragging it along and ripping anything. Then we're gonna turn it long ways. We're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna use, again, the tip of the knife blade, but what you're gonna do is once you get it started, you're gonna pull your hand back to the back side of the mixture. So you can see my thumb is on that back side there. That's holding all those pieces together, just like that as I pull backwards. Be careful you don't cut your thumb here, but get the tip of the knife started, take your hand, put it behind the mixture, hold it flat, and just keep it so it can't slide backwards on you. And look at these gorgeous little potato-like cubes we're getting. That is what's gonna make this potato salad such a wonderful experience to eat because it's literally like eating little cubed boiled potatoes. Okay, so once that's all diced up into our little potato cubes, we just need to put this into the bowl so that we can mix everything together. So slide all of that off. And you can see as I'm doing this, it, it almost looks a little bit like tofu cubes, but once this cools down, it's gonna be so much like potatoes, it's so good. So I'm just kind of going through, breaking it all up, making sure that nothing is stuck together. And you can see it's literally just like these potato cubes in this bowl. Uh, so in my potato salad, I also really like hard boiled eggs. So I boiled some eggs. And if you guys would like to see how I do this, I'd be more than happy to show you, but 
look how easy my eggs peel, right? Get your thumb under the shell right there and the whole shell slides off. That's it. It is that simple. If you'd like to see that, put a comment down below. I'll show you guys how I make my eggs. Easy peel every single time. Never fails no matter how fresh they are. So then I'm going to take six hard-boiled eggs. That seems to be a good number for this size of a recipe. You can do more or less. But I'm going to take a hard-boiled egg. I'm going to cut it in half long ways. Then I'm going to turn both of those onto their flat side. I'm going to cut each of those into three long pieces, just like this. So that's two cuts per egg half. And then turn your knife 90 degrees, and I chop it uh, three to four times. You can kind of cut your eggs however you like. I just think it's a nice size because it's just a little smaller than the potato cubes. So now we have our potato cubes. We have our bacon with bacon grease that I fried up, and we have the eggs. And by magic, there they all are three in the same bowl. I do use the bacon grease. This is about 10 slices of bacon. Use as much or as little bacon as you want. I fold those all together with that bacon grease. And then we take our sauce, which has been in the refrigerator, and it's starting to thicken up some. We're going to pour that butter mayo based potato salad sauce over top of this mixture guys that is just a beautiful sight right there to put sauce on your potato salad it's just the best part as it all comes together you can just tell how good this is going to taste so there's our sauce on the potato salad i'm just going to fold this in now be careful folding it in so you don't just bust up all of your eggs if you don't use eggs, if you don't use bacon, if you use a different sauce or a different spice combination, this is so flexible. You can do this however you want and make your potato salad taste however you want, make it flexible for whatever spices work for you, whatever clean carnivore, dirty carnivore, anything it is you want to do. This is a super flexible recipe and you can spice this however you want. I just like to do it this way because it's kind of how my mom has always done it. And like any good potato salad, it's better the next day, so off to the fridge it goes. All right, guys, there it is. That's how we do the carnivore potato salad. Now, I was going to tell you guys, in case you're wondering uh, how much work this recipe takes, I did the entire recipe, everything from scratch, including the eggs and the bacon um, and then the potato mixture. Plus, I cleaned all of the dishes by hand. Our dishwasher is actually broken right now. We're getting it replaced. Uh, so I did all of my dishes by hand. And on top of it, I was moving cameras and doing my whole filming thing. And all of that together took me right around two hours, maybe just a few minutes over. So um, once you've done this a couple of times and you've practiced this, truthfully, this is not that much of a difficult recipe because a lot of that stuff is actually downtime, like when it's in the oven. So it's not a lot of active working time and you can do this really, really quickly, uh, especially because it's kind of a special recipe and it's really more for those special occasions rather than something you might want to do every day. But it's super great. I just wanted to show you guys what this comes out looking like because it just, I think the thing that's mind blowing for me about this recipe is you make it, you let it sit in the fridge. It's even better if you let it sit in the fridge overnight. And then you plate it up. And I mean, look at that. It looks like potato salad. It tastes so much like potato salad. It has the texture of potato salad when you eat it. It's absolutely fantastic. And like I told you guys in the description, the sauce that I made for this is just my way of doing it. If you have a particular kind of potato salad that you like, you want it more mustardy, you want um, none of the spices and just go full, full, full on clean carnivore, you can totally do that too. Adjust it however it is you like because it's a really flexible recipe. So guys, thank you so much for watching this. My Patreon and my shop are down below if you'd like to support the channel as always. Um, just a thumbs up and a comment and subscribing and sharing the video with people. All of that is so helpful. It means so, so much to me that you guys are here. All of this is really just about you guys and doing things that I feed my own family that I think might be helpful for you to feed yours as well. So guys, thank you so much for watching and all that you do to support me in this. I love every single one of you so much. Um, if you're interested, there's one of the new Chris Cook and Nashville t-shirts. You can get those down below. And like the t-shirt says, eat your meat, love your life, this is Chris Cook in Nashville, and I hope you guys have a great day. I'll see you for the next recipe.